what's up everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to give you episode two of trauma talk on the last video i talked about a lot of personal things and obviously i'm putting my life out on the internet so obviously there's going to be good bad and ugly reactions to what i'm talking about especially for whoever is the content is based on so obviously the my ex the person who the video the last video was based on had an issue with me putting that information out there but you know what my thing is is i have to live in my truth and i can't allow a person who's no longer in my life and the person that has caused me this much trauma to have a say over what i'm doing and how i'm choosing to heal my trauma through this creative outlet that i've been building um this video i've actually written down some notes written down some notes so that i could go in order of what i want to talk about and not get like lost in the shuffle so bear with me so during the course of my relationship with my ex um our child was not planned i completely understand that um i had no intention of having a child neither did he it just somehow happened due to us not being as sexually responsible as we should have been which is fine i consider that to be fate you know i'm still happy to have had my child um but course of the relationship because of my partner's insecurities and always always accusing me of cheating xyz we ended up breaking up shortly before i became pregnant and so through the course of trying to deal with the relationship after it had, it had ended while still being pregnant with his child he requested i have a paternity, a paternity test i'm gonna put it right here this is something that completely decided me because i had never cheated on him didn't have plans to hook up with anybody anyone else even when i was not with him i did not engage in sexual in intercourse with anyone else so the fact that he was claiming that he wanted a paternity test was just another way for him to manipulate me and to make me feel small and to belittle me and to you know allow himself to feel like he had control of the situation and that really hurt me but you know what it is i couldn't believe that after how he had treated me that i was being made to look like the bad guy once again and that was the hardest part about that for me he had claimed that because he wanted to know where his money was going in terms of helping with the baby that he needed to have this paternity test not to mention he did not want to attend appointments with me he when he did at attend appointments with me he would sit on the side and cross his arms and make up his face because he did not want to be there he treated me like shit said horrible things um during my pregnancy he also as you can see in those screenshots didn't want to help me assemble anything for the baby or be present during my pregnancy at all so <sighs> that was hard to deal with another event that happened in that relationship was and i think i mentioned this in episode one my partner was a chronic drinker and alcoholic this man would risk his job that he needs money for to take care of his family his children to be drinking at work at 9 a.m in the morning and this would be a reoccurring issue in our relationship where he would do it and i would get upset about it and then I mean, I, I will take ownership for the fact that I would look through his phone to find out, you know, if that was happening. I even found out once that he got in trouble by his boss for drinking on the job or the, jo the boss was trying to figure out who was drinking on the job and they found bear cans in the work van. So at nine o'clock in the morning, it's, I don't know. I don't know why you would do that and put your job at risk like that. But once again, this is the person I was dealing with. I remember one evening in particular, he came home from work and he just didn't seem like himself. He seemed down or seemed kind of weird, maybe a little overtired, but I hadn't seen him all day. So I was like super, super excited to see him and just to hang out with him, you know, just to be around my partner. It's been a long day with the baby. I just wanted to, you know, have some affection. 
he came home and instead of spending time with me and the baby he decided that he was going to spend an hour in the bathroom on his phone away from me and the baby and when i did try to cuddle with him or to have any sort of time with him i kept asking him what was wrong because he seemed off and he snapped he literally lost it on me and was like fuck your excitement i don't care if you're excited to see me like just leave me alone nothing's wrong with me and he just went to bed and i went to bed crying that night next to him and he did not turn over not one time he didn't turn over not one time to see if i was okay he just didn't care it wasn't until the next day where i'll place the screen the screenshot here where he apologized and these were the types of things that happened in our relationship like this was so normal to me to do this back and forth and like he would do things and apologize do things and apologize you know so i was used to this but it just it kept getting worse and worse and worse every incident so this last incident that i'm gonna talk about um is a bigger issue and this one was really difficult for me um so it was christmas and i had covid so i wasn't even able to spend christmas with my kids i was just stuck in the house with him my kids were at my mom's um him and i on boxing day i got a pause a, a negative test back so i was able to go grab some food so him and i decided to go have some food at a restaurant nearby our house um in the city that we were living in at the time so we went to dinner everything was good we were sitting there having conversation and then one thing led to, led to another and we got into a heated argument at the table about the fact that he wanted to spend every every weekend at his mom's house now my logic was you have moved away two hours away from your family and your friends i understand you want to see them Maybe, you know, you can go down one once week, one weekend out of the month. But to say you want to spend every single weekend at your mom's house without me, that seems a little weird, you know? Like, we're grown, we're adults, you have your own family now. Wouldn't you want to spend time and put energy into your family rather than running home to your mom's house every weekend? That just seemed a little bit sketch to me. Um, so I was not okay with it, and I made that very clear. Now, because of the fact that I wasn't okay with it, he became more and more infuriated sitting at the table. So he decided to stand up and stretch over to the table and snatch the hat that I was wearing right off my head. He spilt the drink. Well, while he was standing up to grab the hat off my head, he ended up spilling a drink that I was having all over me. So I was covered in the drink I was having, and... He's like, I'm not fucking paying for your food. You can pay for your own fucking food. I got up, went to the bathroom, washed myself off, and went straight to the car. When I got to the car, I was emotional. I was in disbelief that that actually just happened in a public place. I sat there for a little while, and then I said, okay, I'm going to text him and ask him to bring me out the keys. I was in, I had the mindset that I was not going to drop him, not going to bring him back home. I was going to have him Uber, Uber because I did not want to drive with him back, and I was the one that drove us to the restaurant. Texted him, waited for, for the keys to come. He came outside to the car and repeated, repeatedly kept pulling on my door handle and telling me to open the fucking door open the fucking door to the point where he almost broke the door handle off so now me thinking okay how can i de-escalate this situation without causing a scene so just to make him stop pulling on the door handle and lashing out on in the parking lot i let him into the car when he got in the car he repeatedly said drive the fucking car you fucking bitch he's going in and out in uh, in and out of rage so i said to him if you think that i'm driving this car with the way you're speaking to me you got another thing coming i'm not having it like you can't speak to me like this xyz i still ended up driving us back home when we get to the house i go straight i bolt straight to the door to the front door and i had it in my mind already that i'm not letting this crazy person in my house with the way you're acting and when i say my house i mean our home our home that we shared at the time so my logic was he's too irate right now he needs to go and just go for a drive or go somewhere else for the night to kind of clear his head i can't be in the same space with him if he's going to be irate because it wouldn't have been good for me in at the end of the the night if he had stayed in the house so we, i get to the front door i'm trying to open the door but he's trying to push himself in so i said okay you know what i'm gonna go over to the other side in between the houses where 
you know, he can't get to me and he can't get the keys because I don't want him to come inside. He decided that he was going to use his his forearm and press me up against the brick wall just out onto the side of our house. And at this time, I had just gotten my boobs done the month. Was it the month before? Yes, a month before that. So I'm still in the healing process of my surgery so as he's pressing up against pressing me up against the wall i have a tight grip of the keys in my palm but i have my arm in my pocket so he's wrestling me for the keys we're wrestling back and forth but i'm, I'm refusing to give him the keys because i don't want him in the house i was i was screaming trying to get someone to help me nobody was out there nobody could hear me and in that area there's no lighting so literally nobody could see us so I was finally able to like wiggle myself out and I ran all the way around to the back, to the, the backyard. And in the backyard, there's a, there's a back entrance into our house. I was able to get inside really quickly. I got to the front door of the house, quickly took his car keys off of the hinge and like tossed them on the front porch and I closed the door. Shortly after, I hear a big bang on the door and it's the police. This man had the audacity to call the police on me even though he assaulted me just before I entered our home. He, I don't know what he thought he was doing, but he had the audacity to call the police to try to gain access to the home, even though he had assaulted me. I told the police, this man is not coming into this house tonight. You can ask him to leave and he can return when he's calmer. So he texted me the next morning and we arranged for him to come and pick up his belongings. Now, him and I have had interactions with the cops before because of other um, domestic disputes that we've had. So I wasn't about to tell the police anything about him assaulting me. And that's where I was wrong and that's where I went wrong. I've been manipulated by him and his mom and his family for so long because of the past incidents to keep my mouth shut and not say anything. And that really tore me down and that made me feel like my voice wasn't being heard. I even apologized to him and his family for having the police involved in our business before when he had put his hands on me, which is really messed up. So fast forward through the rest of the night, he and the police ended up leaving. He ended up leaving. I did not feel safe in that house by myself whatsoever, <laughs> whatsoever. He ended up leaving, texted me the next morning, asked if he can come get his stuff. I told him as long as you can come in and there's no anger, whatever, you can come get your stuff. He came the next morning, we talked it out. There was tears on both ends and we ended up getting back together. This was a month before the relationship actually ended. I'm gonna end that story there, but I don't know what I was thinking, but we ended up getting back together. The last thing that I'm going to uh, provide for you guys as receipts in this video is a letter from the Children's Aid Society expressing their concern for my ex's behavior and how they observed him to be. So this is a complete third party that has had contact with him that is neutral and it's not coming from me. So you guys can see that I'm not lying. I have no reason to lie about these things that happened to me and my family and my children. Um, I just hope that by sharing these things, it allows for anybody who's been through abuse to get the help that they need. Anybody that's been through abuse to come forward, tell someone, even if you don't think that you're ready to leave, tell someone because you just never know when could be your last day. It could be, it starts off small and calling you names and shoving and pushing and kicking and biting like it it gets worse and worse every time and it's not going to get better so if you do feel like you're in a situation like this don't be hesitant to reach out to someone reach out to me even this is why i share these things the trauma that i have been through i'm taking it as lessons to move forward in life and i hope that you guys can find some comfort in my stories so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i shall see you in the next trauma talk Stay tuned and subscribe and like and comment the video. Thank you guys.